you are the dreamer and you are the dream. And I feel the Holy Spirit Mother is calling us each to dream a new world, dream our passions, our visions, a new earth into being. Um, in Hindu mythology, which is very ancient and science and quantum physics is still catching up to Hinduism and what the mystics have written about the nature of consciousness and reality. And it's being continuously verified by science that yes, this is actually how it works. But in Hinduism, there's a mythology of Brahma, the creator, who is dreaming all of this into being. And it's also said by some Gnostic shamans that we are part of Sophia's dream body. This is a dream that we're a part of and we each know what it's like to dream. It's the most human, common human experience, right? We all sleep at night and we know what it's like to dream. Um, and that's such an innate part of what it is to be human. So why wouldn't that roll out into our everyday material reality? Um, and I've taken a few, a few notes, right? And it may not be seen, but the structure of matter, waking matter, this book, this table, is as fluid as one's own dreamscape. Um, both are products of energy coursing through the, the brain, the interplay of matter and energy. From a physicist's perspective, there is no difference between matter of the waking world or of the dream. They are the same thing, right? And there is no dream without an active mind. So a lot of the Sanatana Hindu Dharma, this ancient Dharma, is coming into awareness of Maya, which is this dream. This identity is an illusion. These likes, these hates, these identifications, these attachments, all of that is Maya. It's the dream. It's me getting lost inside the dream. And the, the great way and there's many paths along this way, but the, the great realization that is had and continuously had and deepened is coming into identification with the mind of the dreamer, the awareness of what nothing and everything, the point of presence behind the dream, right? And a lot of people can come into this awareness and then go, oh, well, it's all just Maya and illusions. So I'm going to drop out of society and, you know, to, I'm just going to be the witness. But I think that the, the great play and the great opportunity that we have in this life, the Hindus also say that this, this world is, well, some Hindus, there's so many schools of thought in Hinduism, that this is the mother's play. It's her great Leela. And when we become aware that this is a dream, well then, how then can we bring our own minds, bring our own visualization and imagination into manifesting the dream that is in our own hearts? So another thing I wanna say is, um, there is no dream without an active mind. Thus, neither the world of waking or of dreams can be regarded as an objective reality. Both are purely subjective phenomena. So your waking life is coming out of your own mind and being. It's not an objective thing occurring to you. It's a subjective thing emanating out of you. Um, and this is why we are all Brahman. We are all the Atman. We are all the eyes of God. If we can realize that, if we can realize that reality isn't happening to us, we are happening to reality. Um, quantum mechanics also states that energy only coalesces into matter as we focus on it, right? So our lives materialize depending on what our minds are focusing on and what our minds have agreed to, what our minds imagine our life entails each day. And there was um, a study done, an fMRI exam of lucid dreaming in 2011 at the Max Planck Institute. And it showed that when one clenched a fist in a lucid dream, 
and when one clenched a fist in this material reality, the exact same brain activity occurred. The same brain activity occurred in the dream as it did in reality. And brain activity is a frequency. It's a vibration of energy. So if my brain starts to activate in a certain way, it's, it's coalescing into material reality. Okay. Um, and another interesting thing here is the Sanskrit word for creation is srishti, srishti. And that means projecting a gross thing from a subtle form. That's the word for creation. A gross thing being a dense material thing, physical reality being projected from a subtle form. The subtle form of the mind, the heart, the dream within. Do we allow ourselves to dream, to daydream? And this is what I feel the mother is calling us to do in our lives at the moment, for our own personal lives. What is the passion in your heart, your wildest dream that you might even resist in your own imagination? Are you able to lie back and see yourself walking through the life that you desire for yourself? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? What are you wearing? How do you, how do you feel in your heart? Whatever your desire might be, and you might think, oh no, I could never have that. I could never be that. I could never feel that way. Are you able to imagine it? Can you, can you give yourself a, a few minutes each day to lie and slip into that dreamscape, which is the, 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 the place of weaving your own reality? Contemplation is a huge part of the mystical life. And allowing the contemplation to emanate out of your own heart. So some of us think, oh, my desire is to have this thing. What is beyond the egoic desire? What is your heart's desire? The thing that we might have kept away from ourselves. Oh, I can't be an artist. I can't do that. I can't live in such a, such a way, you know, but I kind of want it. I really want it deep down. That heart passion, that deeply felt dream and desire was put there in you on purpose and your passion your heart's desire is the mother's heart they're the one in the same thing and when we live in our own heart's desire we have feeling right we have feeling when we imagine ourselves in that space and that feeling that emotion energy and motion is what starts to emanate into the electrical magnetic field and create the reality the heart has a much more powerful uh, electromagnetic field in the mind it's huge so can we dream and imagine can we expand in our own minds and hearts and allow ourselves to contemplate that space for our personal selves and for Palestine I'm spending some time just feeling into that place and dreaming plants and connection and peace and restoration and homes growing and orchards growing and people living and community and I'm dreaming uh, this this vision across the earth not just for Palestine so many places are occupied right and hurting I'm seeing the light move everywhere in this communal based mutual respect equanimity I'm just letting my mind play and paint and paint and paint and I'm, I, I want to be part of collective the collective dream and if we can, we can allow ourselves to dream in this manner for ourselves and the collective, it will manifest. We've had our wisdom hijacked from us. And so we get told what the objective reality is. We, we're told that this is reality and it's happening to us. Because we've forgotten that we are the weavers. This is the mother's wisdom. We are the weavers. And it starts in the subtle form, srishti, projecting a gross thing projecting the material thing from a subtle form, the place of dream and play and imagination. One thing I also wanted to say is, uh, here's a note here, in Western religions, a creator God precedes man and the universe. But in, but in the East, which is far more ancient, Hindu gods are preceded by creation. Creation was there in the beginning. Then come the gods. There is nothing above creation. 
and the origin of the world is not envisaged so much as an act of creation, like let there be light and now the world, you know, like in Western religions. It's not like that. It's not an act of creation, but it's one of organization, the making of order out of chaos. It's, it's, it's um, born from the sacred syllable om, um, or from an inert void in which there was neither being nor nothing, nor non-being, death nor non-death. A single principle from which emerged the diversity of life. From this void, desire was born. And from desire came humans, gods, and creatures. So from desire, it even says this in the Rish, uh, the Rish Veda, about in the beginning, desire, which was the first seed of mind, uncovered it. That's what it says. And we see this as well in the Gnostic scriptures, Sophia desired. So what is the heart's desire? What do you desire? What is your passion? That is the actual impetus of life. There is nothing, there's, no, there's, no, there's neither death nor non-death, being nor non-being. There is just this possibility, this void. And the void is animated or, or Form comes into being, matter coalesces out of desire, out of passion. What does your heart bleed for? And can you allow yourself to play, even you might not have it right now in front of you, but we are allowed to, and I'm encouraging us to dream this into being. Can we dream together? Can we dream our own passions into being? Go there, play. I'm having fun in my imagination. And I'm dreaming about, oh, this whole beautiful system of different cultures, total respect, sacred ecology, sacred economy, peace across the earth, Palestinian life and revival for the Sudanese, for the Congolese, for the Americans. I'm dreaming your, your whole system into wellness as well my whole system here at home all of us need help we're all throttled by this colonizer and of course the palestinians are, are the ones showing us right now and, and, and we've what we've witnessed a crucifixion we've witnessed a crucifixion we've witnessed a crucifixion and throughout time there have been people the people of the earth the red people the people of passion and of truth. Many people and cultures have taken it on their bodies for us. They have, they have bled and died for us. It's not a one, that story of the crucifixion is a myth of, of what we see playing out over and over again and how people take it for us, bleed for us, break for us in order for us to awaken. I've, I haven't seen anything more beautiful than a person who has lost everything in Palestine, their family, their babies, standing there saying, God's perfect will, Allah's perfect will, Allah is my provider, Allah, Allah, Allah. This deep awareness of even in this total destruction of their own bodies, that the creator is doing something quite beautiful through them. How beautiful is that? The creator is breaking open a new dream and, and blood comes with the birth. And we are being called right now to carry on in whatever way we are in support of vocalizing against this regime that, that suppresses the dream, that tells us what the dream is. This is what it will be. This is how life looks. Life is an objective reality. No, it's not. It's a subjective, emanating reality. It's a process of becoming. It's a process of becoming. It's not separate entities and objective. It's a process of becoming. And it becomes from the, the, the passion and the beauty and the, the place of the dream and the imagination. So encouraging everyone to, to dream your dream and dream the collective dream together. Just take a few minutes each day to sit and see it and feel it. Sending love.